For the past 10 years, Facebook has been the undisputed leader in the field of social media. However, the fact that Facebook had a dominant position doesn't mean that the company had no competition at all. One of such competitors from the very beginning of its existence was Snapchat, which led to a situation where Facebook launched one attack after another to destroy its developing rival. Today, we're presenting you the full story of the competition between fast-growing Snapchat and social media giant Facebook. Starting from the very beginning of the story, Snapchat was founded by Evan Spiegel, Bobby Murphy, and Reggie Brown in 2011. After several months of working together, these three launched Snapchat as Picaboo on July 8, 2011. The main idea behind the app was ephemeral messaging, which means that photos and messages sent by the app were supposed to automatically disappear after viewing them. The idea of ephemeral messaging quickly gained popularity among teenagers and Snapchat achieved rapid growth in the number of users. On the other hand, in May 2012 at Menlo Park, California, Mark Zuckerberg stepped up to the podium. He's about to take the company public, the most awaited tech IPO ever since Google in 2004. His company's mission was to raise $16 billion, 10 times higher than Google's public offerings. The stock ended that day just 23 cents higher compared to its $38 opening price. It's not that bad, but it's not the runaway success speculators were hoping for. It's another warning to Zuckerberg that Facebook's supremacy is not a lifetime guarantee. Snapchat is beginning to look like the next big thing to happen in the social media market. It's now looking like a competition at this stage. More than 50 million pictures are being shared on Snapchat every day. Though Facebook is still far ahead with 300 million photo shares, just like Instagram, Zuckerberg realizes there's an urgent need to deal with Snapchat before it's too late. As a response to the growth of Snapchat, Mark Zuckerberg decided to build a new app, which was supposed to be a copy of Snapchat. After some months of work and different experiments, the developers came up with Poke. This app allows users to send a video message, text or photo to their friends. Users can also single out a photo and include a location. The sender will determine how long they want the content to exist before it vanishes. Without any doubt, this is a duplicate of Snapchat. The message from Zuckerberg is clear. His company will go after them and crush Snapchat. When Zuckerberg's new invention is finally launched, the tech press talks about how similar it is to Snapchat. Dozens of articles also made mention of it. This creates the attention Snapchat needs. People are anxious to know this new app that Facebook has allegedly copied. During Christmas, Snapchat takes number four position in the App Store. On the other hand, Poke can't be found in the top 30, a massive embarrassment for the biggest social networking site in the world. Zuckerberg is frustrated. This is time for Plan B, the Instagram route. If you can't beat it, then take it. In November 2013, at Snapchat headquarters, Spiegel and Murphy are seated with their chief rival Zuckerberg. The founders were confident before the meeting. Snapchat users are sending 350 million images every day. They just kicked off Snapchat Stories that can join together snaps chronologically. I want to buy Snapchat for $3 billion. Zuckerberg finally hits the nail on the head. The Snapchat executives are astonished. They exchange a quick look, but Spiegel recovers as fast as possible. It's not in Snapchat's plan to monetize, and they have no revenue. It's just two years old, $3 billion is a huge price tag, three times more than the company's current valuation. It means the two will each get $750 million. The two take their time to discuss this while Mark waits for the decision. They believe they can do better. They believe Snapchat can be bigger than Facebook so that the current price will become a chump change. Mark is called in. We appreciate the offer, but it's a no from us. Mark was taken aback. He can't believe his eyes. Are these kids throwing away $3 billion? Overwhelmed, he stands up. They shake hands. Zuckerberg hardly makes eye contact. He leaves immediately. After the snub from Spiegel and Murphy, Facebook won't waste any time before it embarks upon its tech attack on Snapchat. An app known as Slingshot is their most recent endeavor to win back teenage users. Slingshot was an instant messaging software that allows users to send videos and photos to their friends. The only change which Facebook made to distinguish it from Snapchat was that you have to send a photo back before you can view a photo from your friend. This feature was supposed to make Slingshot an app for status updates and sharing casual photos and videos. But in the end, same as Poke, 
the app wasn't able to beat Snapchat. Finally, Facebook closes down Creative Labs, which were creating apps such as Slingshot and Poke that competed with Snapchat. However, it wasn't the end of the rivalry with Snapchat. As a next step, Facebook acquired Masquerade, which was an owner of MSQRD, the AR face filtering app. The app was able to transform faces, overlay makeup or accessories on live video. This was undoubtedly an attempt to compete with Snapchat face filters, which was one of the most popular Snapchat features at the time. Next, in the summer of 2016, Zuckerberg gathered Facebook staff in the company headquarters and delivered a speech, which is going to change the future of its rivalry with Snapchat. I'm sure you've noticed some of the updates and acquisitions we've been making, from masquerade to messenger codes. We're working to give our users what they want. I want to tell you all something. You should not let your pride get in the way of doing what is best for users, even if that means copying other companies. It's August. Instagram unveils Stories, a near-duplicate clone of Snapchat's unique story format that allows you to post photos and videos to your profile that vanishes after 24 hours. This new feature is such an obvious clone of Snapchat. Even Instagram CEO Kevin Systrom tells TechCrunch, they, Snapchat, deserve all the credit. Just two months after its release, more than 100 million people are actively making use of Instagram Stories. What next? Mark Zuckerberg needs to catch the attention of the influencers. He needs them not only to rave about Facebook and Instagram, but they need to stop promoting Snapchat on his social media platforms. So, he gathers his developers to discuss this. We need influencers and celebrities to take their Snapchat profile links out of their Instagram bios. They are asked to remove the links or they lose their blue checkmark. The blue checkmark is a symbol that is important to Instagram influencers and celebrities' success in grabbing endorsement deals. They ignore the threats by Instagram and keep their Snapchat links in their profiles. Facebook plays smart by rewriting its code to stop users from linking their Snapchat profiles to Instagram accounts. Things are beginning to fall apart for Snapchat. Facebook is giving them their biggest headaches. Additionally, after the publication of poor quarterly results, the value of the Snap stock dropped by 23%. Snapchat had to somehow get the situation under control. As a response to the company's problem, the founders Spiegel and Murphy decided to redesign the entire application. Up to this point, the content in the app was displayed chronologically. From now on, the content will be displayed algorithmically. The algorithmic method of presenting the content was supposed to select content tailored to the needs of users with a particular focus on the content sent by their friends. Finally, Snapchat was completely redesigned, but the result was drastically bad. People don't like it because they believe it's difficult to use. 1.2 million people signed an online petition demanding Snapchat to return to the old design. On the other end, Zuckerberg doesn't get the chance to gloat, as this time Facebook was facing the biggest scandal in company history. British consulting firm Cambridge Analytica collected personal data belonging to millions of Facebook users without their consent, and then started using this data for political advertising. Initially, Facebook tried to downplay the problem, but when the major media started publishing information about the activities of Cambridge Analytica, the public outrage grew drastically. FTC starts the investigation. Politicians urged Zuckerberg to testify before Congress, and the movements to delete Facebook takes off. Finally, Zuckerberg realizes the statement and was testified before Congress, but it doesn't help a lot. At this point, Facebook has lost the trust of the public. Meanwhile, Snapchat is back in business. Under pressure from users, the founders of Snapchat decided to go back to the previous interface of the app. Despite the failed attempt to redesign the app, Snapchat continued to introduce new features. On stage, Spiegel introduces SnapKit, which enables developers to integrate Snapchat with their apps. The company also rolls out a premium ad service known as Snap Select, which allows advertisers to purchase ads specifically on Snap's premium original content. Finally, Snapchat introduced Snap Games, which enable users to play with their friends. Snapchat's user base began to slowly grow again, and the company reported stronger than expected financial results. Snapchat managed to survive the rivalry with Facebook, but with increasing competition from other apps such as TikTok, the position of Snap on the social media market is still uncertain. This was the story of the rivalry between Snapchat and Facebook. If you want to see more stories of companies and entrepreneurs, 
don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Story Behind Company.